TV's very own Mr. Magic, Jonathan Ross. Thank you, well, hello, and welcome to Penn and Teller Fool Us, the show where hopeful magicians try and win a chance to perform in Vegas by hoodwinking two masters of the magical craft. We have got some spectacular illusions lined up for you. Over the next hour, you will be breathless with excitement. We'll have you gasping like Anne Widdicombe's dance partner. <laughs> And I can assure you the acts tonight are very special indeed. I've seen them at work. Backstage, uh, one of them made my watch completely disappear. Don't worry, I've found it again. It's on eBay. <laughs> but frankly, it's not me they have to fool because I'm no professional magician. I've never pulled a rabbit out of a hat. I did pull a hair out of my nose once, but that's an age thing. <laughs> so long it made my eyes water and I felt a twinge in one of my buttocks. <laughs> The men they have to fool have spent the last decade lighting up Las Vegas without ever needing to be plugged in. They are, of course, the fabulous Penn and Teller. Hey, welcome to Vegas. My name is Penn Gillette. I'm a part of Teller. We're Penn and Teller. We've been performing here at the Rio Hotel for 10 years. Vegas loves magic. Thank you all so much for coming on the theater here this evening. Drop! Mazel tov! Our job is fooling people, but now we want to be fooled. No, tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Tell her. Even for professionals, there's nothing like the thrill of being bamboozled by a great trick. So we're challenging magicians to come on with their favorite tricks and perform them for us. We'll be in the audience and we'll watch it live and only once, just like everyone else. No camera tricks, no funny edits. And if anyone can fool us, we'll pay for them to come and perform here on our stage in Las Vegas. But be warned, if we can figure out how the trick is done, we're gonna say, well, I'm gonna say. So to get here and play the big stage in Las Vegas, all of tonight's performers are gonna need is lots of guts. But the risk will be worth it because the winners will get to experience this. No, 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 you gotta go around that way. The winner will get to experience this. Come on, guys, give it your best shot. Ooh. That's the show right there. And I know they might seem like a weird combination, but it's an American thing like peanut butter and jam or bacon and syrup. It shouldn't work, but it does brilliantly. Will you please welcome the majestic Penn and Teller? <laughs> We've got some incredible acts, incredible performers lined up for you. Do, can I ask, do, are you at all nervous? Is there a kind of professional pride thing at stake here? I'm uh, scared to death. You know, this seemed like such a good idea when we thought of it. And then we walk out here and I'm, I'm terrified. I'm you so see? afraid that every single person is going to fool us. We're going to ask you to sit down now. The guys are going to be sitting right there. They're going to be watching the whole thing. And uh, you're going to be communicating with each other throughout the kind of... Uh, yes, we will. So we'll find out whether or not you know. Because, you know, the whole trick is to fool Teller, not yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, have to listen to him. <laughs> he's, he's the brains of the outfit. He certainly yeah, is. Okay. Uh, guys, would you like to go and take your seats? Okay. Mr. Penn and Teller, ladies and gentlemen. Get right comfortable. So Penn and Teller will talk about how they think the trick has been done, but in such a way uh, that they don't necessarily give away the secrets. Obviously, I'm not really qualified to judge if they're correct, but luckily upstairs we have a magician who has spent the last 60 years working with the biggest names in magic, uh, helping them work on illusions, designing some himself. He's kind of the Simon Cowell of sorcery, and his word <laughs> will be final. So let's meet our first contenders this evening. Hi, Jinks. <laughs> I'm Michael, I'm 20. I'm Tamsin, I'm 23. 
We are Hijinx, an illusionist double act from Huddersfield. Tamsin joined the act about three months ago. Since Tamsin has joined us, I've been teaching her how to perform the illusions and just trying to teach her as much as we possibly can. Being part of Hijinx has just been absolutely brilliant so far. I'm loving it. I'm loving working with Michael. In the short amount of time that Tamsin's been with me, she's doing absolutely brilliant and she's wanted to take part in all the other things, the circus skills, the stilt walking and the juggling. She's just wanting to really have a go at everything, really. Working as a double act uh, can be quite difficult at times. You've got to rely on the other person and they've got to rely on you. It is quite common that two magicians that work together are a couple, um, but me and Tamsin are a couple. Not yet. <laughs> Please welcome the delightful, the spectacular hijinks. Ladies and gentlemen, that was great. That was fabulous. I just noticed. Did you notice uh, the uniform is all ripped from where the things went in there? That's great. I love the whole look of it. I love your outfits you're wearing. So the guys are going to have a think now about whether they know how it's done, of course. Um, how confident do you feel? Um, I mean, they're pretty hard to fool, I reckon. It's going to be pretty hard to fool them. Uh, you know, you mentioned in the film before you were kind of hoping maybe you would start going out. <laughs> Just discreetly, and I promise to keep it quiet if the answer's no. But are, are you are you going out? Uh, yeah, we are. Yes, yeah. come on. <laughs> We're bringing people together. <laughs> Tanner's drawing something there, so either he's got a pretty clear idea what's going on, or he's just bored and doing the Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> no rude pictures, please. Okay, do you want to come forward, fellas? Okay. 
Does it mean that because you've become a couple in this short period of time, we're going to become a couple? Because that's a <laughs> horrific idea. A horrific idea. Uh, Kelly's got a little something to show you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to show that to the audience, Teller? Or... <laughs> Carl, it's a great, it's a great act, Thank you so much. Congratulations. You know, I looked at the drawing you did. I still don't know how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great performance. It was great, but they, they nailed you. They, you didn't fool them? No, we, no, we didn't fool them. <laughs> it's a great performance, though, and it's so nice that you're together as well. So it's a, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a nice, warm feeling for all of us. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Michael and Tangent hijinks, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now to meet our next performer. John Allen. My name's John Allen. I'm a professional magician and creator of magical effects. Uh, the style of magic I do is uh, close-up magic mainly. I always try to do magic with everyday objects and things that people can relate to. The trick I'm going to be doing tonight is very dangerous. I don't think anyone's died yet from doing it, but it has caused a lot of injuries, and, and hopefully uh, I won't be added to that list. I'd say this trick works 99 times out of 100. To date, I've probably done it 98 times. Tonight, it's probably going to be 50-50. If I look nervous, it's because I really, really am. The sort of reactions I get when I perform this, I've had people screaming, people just not wanting to look, and some people wondering if I'm actually a sane human being. That, I never let on. The trick you are about to see is definitely risky. If it goes well, if it works, our next performer could be going to Vegas. If it goes badly, he will be going to Casualty and then almost straight on to YouTube. Will you please welcome <laughs> Mr John Allen. <laughs> Are we in control of our own fate? Clearly, for me tonight, the answer to that question is no. <laughs> but are any of us in control of our own fate? Because every single day, we rely on other people for our own safety. Whether it's other drivers on the road, the chef who cooks our food in the restaurant, or even the person who secured the studio lights to the ceiling above your heads. <laughs> so let me explain what I have here. Inside the first three bags, I have a block of wood. Now, the reason for the block of wood will become apparent in a few moments. In the fourth bag, there is another block of wood, but as you can see, I've drilled a hole through it. The reason for that is this. A solid six-inch stainless steel spike. Technically, it's a nail, uh, but I do like alliteration. <laughs> now, I need someone to verify that this is, in fact, sharp. So, uh, the lady just on the end there, your name is... Sophia. Sophia, can you come up and join me, please? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> thank you for coming to help. Thank you. Sophia. Could you just slam your... Actually, don't slam your hand down. That would be quite silly. <laughs> could you just tap the palm of your hand just on there very gently? Is that... Is that sharp? Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, the nail goes into the bag. Yeah? Happy? Yeah. Good. Now, I need to mix up the bags so that nobody knows where the nail is. But so that you don't know, I have this screen. Now, Sophia, could you just turn around so that you can't see either? That's fine. Now, I'm just going to mix up the bags so that none of you know where the nail is. But I know what you're thinking. I don't expect that to fool you. Well, that's why I'm going to have Sophia mix up the bags as well. Sophia, can you just turn around? And can you just mix up the bags for me just a few times and just leave them in a straight line? And now you can see why I have the extra blocks, otherwise it's quite easy to see which are the empty bags. Have you done that? Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Let's take this away. So, tonight I'm going to put my safety into the hands of somebody else. 
you. <laughs> it's time to go serious because there are videos online of people doing this type of effect and getting it wrong and badly injuring themselves. And because of that, I have to say a couple of things. First of all, check out the videos because some of them are quite funny. But also, <laughs> please do not try this at home. And for legal reasons, I have to say in front of everybody here, if this goes wrong and I end up getting injured, the fault lies entirely with Sophia. <laughs> Sophia, I'm going to pass my hand over each bag. When you get a sense or a feeling that my hand is over a safe bag, that's one, well, without the nail in, I'd like you just to say, stop. Stop. This one here. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Suddenly, this seems like a really stupid thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> one down. <laughs> Literally one down. All right. Two more to go. Sophia, the same thing. When you think my hand is over a safe bag, just say stop. Stop. In this one? Okay. Maybe there are times when you are in control of your own fate, and maybe tonight is just such a moment for you, Sophia. Could you take maybe two steps to your right? Are you left or right handed? Right. That's a shame. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're going with your instincts. Mm -hmm. All right, just let your <laughs> just let your arm go loose, okay? We'll do this on the count of, just let it go loose. Expand to the muscles, just in case. <laughs> on the count of, one! <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Sophia, I promise that I will do this one. Okay. All right. For the final time, when you think my hand is over the safe bag, you get that gut feeling, just say stop. Stop. That's it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Why do I do this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes! Tremendous. Let's Thank go around the front here. That was uh, fabulous. It was nerve wracking and it was funny at times as well. And uh, poor Sophia almost fainted, I think, at one stage. <laughs> and you're right, I have seen these clips on YouTube. There are uh, incidents of people actually doing this and actually getting impaled. Yep. I mean, for real, I've seen these things. I don't know if they do it the same way as you. I don't know why that happened, how that happened, but has it ever gone wrong or nearly wrong for you? It hasn't gone wrong yet, but right. so there's always that inherent risk of something going wrong. Yeah, yeah. And when you do it, when you had Sophia's hand and you pushed it down there, is there a moment where you think, A, I might have got this wrong, and B, thank God it isn't my hand? <laughs> well, I just to use someone's hand for all of it. <laughs> uh, that's the easiest way out of it. Uh, but no, I, I, do, I do worry for the person, and thank you for, for doing something well, you didn't you know you were going to do, so I appreciate that. Um, and can I just ask, have you performed in Vegas before? Have you visited Vegas before? Have you done shows over there? I'd love to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done it yet. OK, well, Penn and Teller are still talking. I think... Uh, do you think I've given them long enough, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. I think I have. Because what they have to do, of course, is get it right. They can't just give me three possibilities. They can't give me two possibilities. I'm going to make them settle on one, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Penn! Teller! Hello? How can you just ignore me? <laughs> OK, Mr Penn? First of all, I want to address a moral issue. The, what you said about uh, the videos on YouTube uh, is absolutely true. There are people that have done tricks similar to this who have been injured doing it, and I want to just state very strongly that magicians that do things that are truly dangerous uh, are immoral, that's wrong to do, and I'm hoping that the producers would never allow this on this show, and I believe they would not. That having been said, we don't think there's any chance involved in this whatsoever. Jella was expecting through the whole trick that you had nails in all four bags, 
and you were going to pull it up from the bottom and hook it up from that. You didn't do that. I believe, and I could be wrong, that I saw after you did the kind of faux praying gesture uh, on the last bag and came down, I believe your right hand went out of sight. And I believe you copped the prop to load it into the final bag. Is that right or is that wrong? Because if that's right, you didn't fool them. Yep. If that's wrong, you're going to Vegas. Much as I'd love to go to Vegas, that's close enough for me that you got it. Whoa, well, thank wow. you. first show, not one but two magicians came on and confounded Penn, no surprise there, but they also <laughs> fooled Teller. So, that meant both John Archer and Ben Earl were whisked off to light up Las Vegas. Vegas, baby! Here's a bit of advice. If you can't see Vegas in a helicopter, see it in a red Chevy. Or do both somebody else's pain. When we first talked about doing this show, uh, it was, let's see as much great magic as we can and see who fools us. And nobody really knew where the, uh, where the dial was set. Mr. John Archer. John Archer will always be uh, special to us because he was our first. 80. 100 pounds. Just silly. It's not really supposed to fool us. To fool any magician takes a bit of doing, but to fool Penn and Teller, it, it's up a level. Mr. Benjamin Earl. I was confident going in that I could fool Penn and Teller. I was also very nervous that anything could, could happen. He's not only uh, skilled enough to fool us, but also his knowledge of the, the culture of card magic is, is much more sophisticated than ours. Wow. It's big. Stepping out on stage today was amazing. It felt a little bit gladiatorial. And you just look up and you just think, it's going to be full of Romans deciding whether to put the thumbs up or down. Feel good about the show tonight? Yeah, excited. Very much. Yeah, excited. Yeah. Every friend I have in Vegas will be here to see you guys because they're just dying to know who the uh, who no, the guys no were that fooled yeah. us. No pressure. They, they'll speak to you afterwards and say, they fooled you. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A few minutes now until stepping on stage. Pretty nerve-wracking, um, but massively exciting. How often do you get the chance to perform in a huge Vegas show? Possibly the biggest Vegas show there is. All of a sudden, you're coming into their world on their stage, and all of a sudden, it's game face. I'm attempt to find four of a kind from a shuffle deck. Hi, <laughs> Kite. But, uh, just absolutely pumped. Welcome to the United States of America, John Archer! You might go for envelope number four. Envelope number four is mine. And you will notice, Ed, that mine is much bigger than yours. <laughs> Get over it, Ed. I'm a big fella. It's genetics. <laughs> Any group of four numbers, you can add up those four or those four or those four or those. Over 75 combinations of 54 in 26 seconds? No! <laughs> It worked, I did it. I think you could put John almost anywhere and uh, he would uh, he would absolutely kill. It just makes you think, why can't I be doing that every night? They've got the best job in the world, those guys. John Archer, Ben Earl, beautifully done. They fooled us in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Vegas before, and I've had fun in Vegas before, but this has been insane. I've had a lot of nice experiences, but I think this, at this point in my life, tops it. So, from that, you can see the prize on offer tonight to all our magicians is second only to meeting the real Harry Potter. <laughs> now, you know all the rules, so let's meet the next challenger. 
Graham Jolly. Oh, yeah. Hello, my name is Graham Jolly. I'm probably one of the world's oldest mind readers or mentalists. Yeah, bloody marvellous. You're probably wondering what the word mentalist is. Well, it's different from a magician, although we all come from the same background. Four. It is four. But when I got to about 15, I thought it was rather childish doing this sort of thing. It doesn't feel right, you know, and so I stopped. Hello, ladies. Thank you. Would you help me? I've been doing this now for about 40 years, I think. Two of those years have been successful. The rest, well, it's been downhill, really. <laughs> I used to be the world's fastest mind reader, but now I'm sort of slowed down, rather. I've now become one of the oldest mind readers in the country. I'm nearly 66 now, and people think I should pack up, retire, and spend more time with the family. Thank you. I don't want to. Have you seen my wife? <laughs> The problem is, I've got a full pen and teller. I've got to do something which pen and teller couldn't even be bothered to try and work it out. In that way, I can sort of short circuit their thinking process. I hope. Mm. I'd be lying if I said I didn't care whether I um, fool them or not. I would like to fool them. <laughs> Goodbye. If you ever wonder what would happen if Basil Fawlty had gone into magic, I think we're about to find out. Will you please welcome Graham Jolly? <laughs> well, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to try and read your minds. I have two experiments. The first one will definitely not fall pen and teller. The second experiment I very much hope will. There's no guarantee. The theme of the experiment is colour, ladies and gentlemen. Five different coloured snooker balls. I hope you can see them clearly. Red, brown, blue, yellow and white. And I'm sure each one of you in the room has a particular preference for one of these colours over the others, according to your personality. Jonathan, would you help me? Would you come up, please? A nice round of applause for Jonathan. Good evening. Jonathan. Don't I think just yet, Jonathan, but uh, in front of you have five different colours snickerballs, is that correct? I, I have my them. back to you, I can't see what you're about to do. Jonathan, would you look at the colours and think of one of them now? And would you remove it? Would you remove it and place it in your right-hand trouser pocket? Your right-hand trouser pocket, please. Done. Does that look better? It's comfortable. <laughs> Four remain, is that correct? Yeah, uh, yes. Think of one of them, remove it. Would you place that in your right-hand jacket pocket over here? Okay. Visual clue, your right-hand jacket pocket, please. Have you done that? Yes, yes, You have sir. three remaining. Would you think of one of them, remove it? Would you place that in your left-hand trouser pocket? Your left-hand trouser pocket, please. Have you done so? Yes, And yes. you have two left? Yes. Would you think of one of them, remove it? Would you place that over here in your left-hand jacket pocket? Your okay. left-hand jacket pocket, please. Okay. Have you done that? Done. And, Jonathan, you have one left, is that correct? Yeah, there's just would, the one left. Would you take it and would you place it in one of your inside breast pockets, right or left-hand side, and let me know when you've done so, please? It's done. Are they the all gone? They're all now, gone. Jonathan, most people think of those colours in a particular preference according to their personality and character. I'm going to try and judge your character and try and work out how your mind works. Good luck. Are you by nature a fairly extrovert, outgoing kind of person? No, I'm quite shy. I don't like this. <laughs> Do you have difficulty in making decisions? Um... Yes or no? You are... You're a complex person. I don't want you to deny or confirm my next remark. Don't nod, smile, or give me any clues. But I have a feeling you went for red. And I think you placed the red in your right-hand trouser pocket. Do you have a look? This should be the red. It is the red. Thank you. left you with a choice of just four covers. You're the kind of man, I think you are, you're the kind of man who, after a hard day at the studio, likes to get home, put on some music, pour yourself a drink, and put on women's clothing. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. You used to, and, um... <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think you went for brown. I think you placed the brown in your right-hand jacket pocket. Have a look. It is I the did. brown. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that round of applause. Now, that left you <laughs> with a choice of just three colours. Yes, sir. Have you, in the last two or three years, ever seriously, I mean seriously, considered committing a criminal offence against Piers Morgan? Well, on a daily basis. Who hasn't? <laughs> Interesting response. I think you went for blue. And I think you placed the blue in your left-hand trouser box. Do you have a look? It is the blue. blue. Thank you very much indeed. Left you with a choice of just two colours. Jonathan, don't tell me which, but just say yes or no. Can you remember your next choice? Not really. You can't. Have a little... <laughs> Let me have a look. Uh, no, don't look. Don't look. Obviously, I can't read Jonathan's mind because he doesn't know what it is, so I'll have to use a different technique. Guessing. I think you <laughs> probably went for yellow, and I think you placed the yellow in your left hand jacket pocket. Do you have a look? Yellow. Is it the is. yellow? I and the white. The white's in your breast pocket. 
There it is. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I don't think that will fool Penn and Teller. My Aunt Mary can think of three possible solutions. <laughs> so may I invite Penn and Teller to join me? And that's a round of applause for Penn and Teller. Thank you. Thank you. I'm obliged to give you my card. I'm a financial advisor. And um, <laughs> I'd like to show you a card trick, if I may, gentlemen. I'll just give the pack a shuffle. Now, Pen. Yes. Would you kindly cut off about a third and hold it against your chest, if you would? Do I look? Uh, that's right. Hold it like that. That's it. But Perfect. do not look. Is that right? look. Yeah, you can look, but not me. Tell her, just cut about a half, would you? And hold it against you. Would you now, gentlemen, both look and remember your cards? Uh, would you just, just drop yours back, please, Pen? Yes. And it's tell hard, her. Sorry, it's a, it's a long stretch. Just and drop I'm yours huge. back. Tell her, I hope you don't think I'm rude, but is it okay to call you Tell her? It seems awfully familiar. It's okay. Okay, well, <laughs> what I tried to do was a little bit of misdirection there. I was trying to distract Teller to uh, look away from my hands, but it didn't work. <laughs> I find it quite irritating, actually, and um, <laughs> I don't like your attitude. No, no. I'm mean, joking. Forgive me. I've reversed two cards in the pack. The Jokers, were they your cards? Did either of you choose the Joker? No. Uh, I okay. Did not. Okay. Because the jokers will tell me where your cards are. To be quite honest, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how this is possible. I don't know the cards Penn and Teller cut to. I obviously wouldn't know where they are. But they do. They talk to me. You'll find this interesting. And um... <laughs> <laughs> they will tell me where the two cards are. Hello. Can you speak clearly, please? It's not Channel 4, and, um, <laughs> it's where? The 18th card from the top. Thank you so much. And, um, tell us, Joker will tell me where your card is. Ah, that's clearer. 43rd. OK, the, the Jokers tell me that the two cards are at the 18th and 43rd card from the top of the pack. I'm sorry, I've got to do this fairly quickly. I know it's dull. I'm just going to count down to the 18th card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I never forget, ladies and gentlemen, what Sigourney Weaver once said to me. She said, who are you? <laughs> I'm trying to make this entertaining. And, um... <laughs> 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Gentlemen, well, here are the cards. Pen, please, what was your card, if you would? King of Spades. The King of Spades. You were so close. <laughs> Tell her, you better just nod. Was your card the five of spades? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. That, that. <laughs> that. That. I know what you're thinking, ladies and gentlemen. You're thinking this is quite a lot of procedure for what is really a very minor miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the jokers don't talk to me. But the Jokers do have the power of prediction. Because before the show, Penn's Joker predicted 18, and Teller's Joker predicted the 43rd <laughs> position. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I think they've had long enough to discuss it, don't you? you, know, you should ask him. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was great. Well, you know what I love is sitting from there, I'm watching, I'm trying to see what you're doing, I can't work it out. But the audience's reaction, when you pulled some of those last things up, they were looking at each other completely dumbfounded. That must be a, a lovely it's very satisfying, say. yes. They look genuinely uh, mystified to me. If they get it, are they done? We've had a great show. That was tremendous, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go back in. Thank you so much. I think they've had a good oh. There's two chatting about it. Mr. Penn, Mr. Teller.
Just ignoring me won't make it go away, you know. I mean, you're going to have to talk to us sooner or later. He's still... How rude are these Americans, eh? <laughs> they come over here, they take our shows, they ignore our hosts. <laughs> Gentlemen, you look a little perplexed. Well, let's start with a few things it's not. Uh, you did not do a card force. We had a real choice of the card. Could we look at that deck now? Yes. We could. We could look at the deck. Well, I hope now. I haven't given you a clue. Uh, so, um, there is not, as you can see, these, this is a, as far as I can tell... I haven't eaten. Um... This is a... Uh, <laughs> this is a regular deck of cards. There's not a bank. You could have had a bank of king and spades uh, a third of the way down. I was going to use that method, actually. But you did. Gosh, but yes. you did. I get the feeling... So you are, you, are you just fishing here? No, I'm not you fishing. Know, you I'm going telling you what it, what it couldn't be. Yeah. I'm building him up. Are you? Because yeah. it's so great. Okay. So I think by doing all of that with no force and no deck switch, you might know what my next words are going to be. I believe, Graham, you fooled us. Ah! You You go back to the seat. Later on, I'll tell you how he did it. Please do. Please do. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs>We have seen some tremendous acts, and one person is going to Vegas. That's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> now, they may have been working together for over 35 years, but they've never stopped inventing new tricks, new acts, and now we're going to see their very latest. Will you please show your appreciation for the magnificent Penn and Teller? <laughs> As Jonathan said, this is a brand new trick for us. We've never done it over here. We've also never done it anywhere on television. It's an escape trick. And we haven't done a, an escape act in years. It's also a stupid trick. Um, it, it's really stupid, but there's one moment in it that, that's kind of boss. And we do the whole trick just for that one moment. And I'm going to pick um, somebody from the audience here. Let's see who we got. Uh, how about you, sir, with the tats? Yeah, right up here. What's your name, please? Steve. Come up here, would you please, Steve? And just walk up here on stage. Now, when, when you're brought on stage for an escape act, it often turns into this kind of macho competition thing. Because usually when you're brought on stage for an escape act, you're essentially, Steve, you're like, you're like tying a guy up, you know? Like put rope on him or straight jacket or handcuffs or leg irons and there's, Telephone booths and Niagara Falls and helicopters. We're not doing any of that, Steve. What Teller's gonna do is he's gonna escape from this trash bag. <laughs> That's a whole trick, an escape from a trash bag. Something any of you could do. And we're also gonna fill the bag with helium, hmm. which makes the trick even stupider. Because helium is a deadly gas. It displaces oxygen. The amount of time you can stay in a helium environment is only the amount of time you can hold your breath. It's a deadly gas. But it's also a fun and happy gas. <laughs> when you think about helium, you don't think about it being deadly. You think about it blowing up balloons for children's birthday parties. So it's really stupid to do a dangerous trick that looks happy and fun. We're going to fill this bag with helium and tell it we'll escape from the trash bag without letting the helium out. Steve, just cinch this shut, would you please? When you get it shut, just let go for a second. I'm just gonna give this a tot. And then, uh, if you would please, Steve, bring your hand in here, you know, right in here, left yeah. hand, right up close so the gas doesn't get out very much. And then you also be very careful of your rings okay. and your watch, because you don't want to puncture the bag or you ruin the whole trick. Okay. We're gonna start filling this up. Now, any of you could get out of this trash bag, and that's another thing that makes it stupid. We're filling it up there. Be real careful of that watch there, Steve. Filling it up here. I just want to check. I want to check on Teller. Make sure he's doing okay in there. You okay in there, Teller? Yes, I am, Pat. <laughs> well, you've heard Teller speak on stage. Fill this up a little more. There we go. 
I just keep holding. I know you're bending over. Try not to hit it with your uh, with your watch there. And then let go for a second. Let me just get another time. Now you're going to hold it a little bit differently. Take your left hand, hold it near the end. Don't let go. Okay. Hold that tight. Keep it right there. Don't let go. Like I said, it's a really stupid trick, but there's one moment in it that's really boss. We do it for this just one moment. One, two, three. And that's the moment right there. When the audience sees it. Next time, as we try to fool them here on Fool Us. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.